Welcome to today's episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, I'm going to be doing, yet again, another Nintendo game. But this game is even more special than any of the other Nintendo games we've covered so far. This is Skyskipper, a Nintendo arcade game that had a very limited release in 1981. Actually, technically, it was a test release. That's right. This game only had the pleasure of having a test release, so it never really got a full release. Only like 13 cabinets of Skyskipper were produced, and most of them were just either destroyed or converted into Popeye cabinets. And there's only one original Skyskipper cabinet that still exists in the world today, and that one is the one that exists currently at a warehouse in Nintendo of America's headquarters in Redmond, Washington. So, for the longest time, this game actually, not many people played this game, and somehow, for whatever reason, Parker Brothers made an Atari 2600 version of it in 1983, even though the arcade version wasn't even that much around in the United States, or really anywhere in the world, not even in Japan. But, luckily, um, a, a group of n dedicated Nintendo arcade fans got together and well, they were able to create their own um, recreate recreated um, replicas of of skyskipper cabinets using the original PCBs that were discovered by fans. And not only that, but the game uh, was dumped onto Mame about five or five or seven years ago. And not only that, but Nintendo actually made it officially available on the Nintendo Switch. Um, via Hamster's Arcade Archive series, so if you want to play this game, and if you have a Switch, you can actually get it for only $8, and it's freaking amazing that they were able to pull that off. I rem actually remember the day that they announced that it would come to the Switch. I was at school, and it was like just the greatest news that I had, one of, some of the greatest news that I would heard, like, ever. So, that was actually a while ago, but... I still remember that glorious day, and I'm still very happy about that happening. So, today I get to share with you guys the magic of possibly the most obscure Nintendo game ever made, Sky Skipper. So anyway, I have my NES controller once again, so let's get cracking. So, in Sky Skipper... You play as this pilot named Mr. Yu, and what you have to do is you have to fly around here and try to drop and try to knock out these gorillas with um, these uh, bombs that look kind of like muffins or cupcakes. And all you have to do is just rescue all of these people that are based on uh, suits, card suits, like and like. You have, like, the clubs, the spades, the diamonds, and the hearts. And then also you have the joker. You also have the jack, the queen, the king, and the ace, I think, or something. But yeah, you just have to save all these people as you fly around in your little plane and drop bombs or muffins on these gorillas. And you also have to be careful of clouds, as well as the gorillas throwing these baseballs at you, trying to knock you out of the sky. And also you have to be watchful of your fuel tank. Can't let that run too low. Hey, It says, damn it. It actually says, damn it. You know? That's pretty crazy. Especially for a Nintendo game. But yeah, like... You just have to... That's pretty much the whole game, but... Cool thing about this game is the very detailed graphics. Like, seriously, look at all of this. Look how much detail they have on these sprites. And this game was made in 81, right after Donkey Kong. So, they really pulled off some impressive stuff. And, well, this, of course, like I said earlier, this same hardware was used for the Popeye arcade game from 1982. So, yeah, it's pretty impressive what Nintendo was able to do with the old technology, even with their arcade games before the days of the Famicom, and the Super Famicom, and NES and SNES. You know, I wish Nintendo still made arcade games. I know they stopped around 1985, 
even though they did continue kind of continue with the versus system games but it was never but but even then they, that only lasted until around 1990 i wish nintendo still made new arcade games or at least something like the olden days or at the very least they could like do remakes of their old arcade games for like the switch with new controls or something like i would absolutely love for nintendo to make a remake of their old gun games like duck hunt hogan's alley wild gunman that would be freaking epic the most epic thing you could i could ever imagine like seriously those games are so awesome but not many people get to play them but giving them all, people a new chance to experience them will allow them to learn about it and want to play the original version so that would be a perfect idea hell that's kind of the way it was for punch out like the first that i first learned of punch out because of the wii game and well i love that so much that i discovered the nes game and well <clears throat> and well yeah it's great when they do remakes or se sequels of old games that haven't been around for years because it gives it allows new fans to experience the games for the first time and discover the old versions so a whole new generation of fans can be spawned from that so yeah nintendo really should step up their game with a new duck hunt or a new hogan's alley or wild gunman because that, that would be freaking epic as hell believe me and not only that, but all the other companies that used to make arcade games. Well, I mean, some of them still do, but it's not the same as they used to. Like, Sega. Like, long before the days of Sonic the Hedgehog and all this other stuff, Sega was a... F like, like Sega has always done some really cool stuff, even with all their mishaps with stuff, especially with the Sonic games. But back in the 80s, man, Sega freaking was a really... Was, e was really cool. Like, they had all these awesome games, like... Uh, Pengo and Flicky, Teddy Boy Blues, um, they actually did an, an arcade port of Activision's Pitfall 2, which was pretty cool. And I got killed. But anyway, yeah, like, Sega had, Sega had some freaking amazing arcade games, and not only that, but also Space Harrier, and Fantasy Zone, and, and Hang On, and Afterburner, so many great games. And, well, I really wish that Sega, like, I mean, Sega is kind of already doing real releases of their older games with the Sega Ages series, which is fantastic, by the way. I have some of the Sega Ages ones, including the Alex Kidd re-release, which is the best way to play the game because it includes an all-new version of the game with FM sound as opposed to the original PSG sound from the original version. And I do love those re-releases. They actually did a re-release of the, the G-Lock arcade game, uh, the G-Lock arcade game, which was in that cabinet that rotated all around, which is probably the coolest, but also the probably the most freakiest thing ever. Oh yeah, you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out for those clouds. Those clouds are dangerous as hell. So yeah, like, they even re-released the G-Lock arcade game, which I never even thought that people would ever imagine doing, because the G-Lock thing was a whole beast in it of itself. But anyway, like, yeah, Sega is kind of doing that sort of thing that I want Nintendo to do, but there are a bunch of other Sega games that I really wish should also get a lot of attention, especially Pango. Like, freaking, I love Pango so much. It is probably one of my favorite Sega games ever made because it's just such a cool game. Like, the music is amazing, even though, yeah, it is a 8-bit rendition of the game, of the song Popcorn, but come on, it's Popcorn. One of the greatest songs ever devised by man. And it's in the game, and well, I thought that was really cool, and I absolutely hated when they changed the song because of fears of copyright, even though they could probably get away with it or something. I don't know, it's like, I just wish, like, you know, it's just such a cool game, and I wish it got more attention, because it's definitely an underrated Sega classic. Sound familiar? Yes, yeah, like they got the do 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 do, you know, from Donkey Kong. I first heard that. I thought that was so cool how they snuck that in there in that little victory song. Anyway, trying to save these guys with my muffin bombs. No, I I'm I'm sorry. I just can't help. 
nuts, but say, those bombs look like muffins. You can't convince me otherwise. They look like freaking muffins, or cupcakes, whatever. Actually, now that I think about it, they look more like cupcakes, because those little dots on them look like sprinkles. And I don't know about you, but I don't put uh, sprinkles on my muffins, unless I'm really bored. Hell, I don't, I don't even make muffins. Or cupcakes. Oh crap. Oh crap, that was close. I almost fucking bit the dust right there. Oh, and right there it fucking got me. Well, that's the game, but I got the high score and I can enter my initials like a total boss. But, anyway, that was, that was Skyskipper. Probably the most obscure Nintendo game ever made, ever released. I highly recommend you check out this game. Either if it's on MAME, or, actually, better yet, get the Nintendo, the official Nintendo Switch re-release for arcade, from Arcade Archives series from Hamster. It's only $8, and it, it is a freaking interesting piece of Nintendo history that's also very fun to play. But, anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope to be back next time for more obscure but fun games for me to play and talk about with you guys, as well as other random things. Just, you know, just to chill, just have some fun. Because, really, that's all what we want. That's what we all want in life. Just to enjoy ourselves and just chill and talk with each other and have fun. But, anyways, thank you very much for watching, and as always... I am Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.